See, now I don't really do a whole lot of wrap ups because I pretty much vlog every single book that I read. Everything seems to fit nicely into some kind of vlog. So usually I say all of my thoughts in those videos and then I move on and forget about what I thought about that book, which is so apparent because I'm looking at some of the books that I read in January, for instance, and already I'm like, I might have to go back and watch my vlog on that. <laughs> and you're probably thinking as well, oh, well that must mean that you're reading too fast, Gav. But I, I disagree. I disagree. Yes, if you read the title, you will know that I've read 124 books so far this year. That's from January 1st through to March 31st. And I will say that 80 of those books are manga and 44 of those books are novels, which totals 31,367 pages. And again, like I, I read fast anyway. I don't ever just listen to audiobooks. If I do listen to an audiobook, I'm reading along physically just to keep me focused, you know, just to keep my, my mind on the actual book and now having that kind of immersive reading experience has really helped with my reading so far this year. I mean I will say that my average star rating is 3.6 out of 5 so far. To me it's, it's pretty good especially considering last year I never got a single 5 star book. But I think so far with my reading journey this year I have definitely found some books that I love, some books that I, I hate but like that was inevitable. But I feel like I'm definitely getting a lot better with feeling like I'm part of the book community again this year and everyone's reading journey is so different so please don't compare how many you've read with how many I've read this year. This isn't a competition, this is just how much I've read, how much that I've read for vlogs and videos because I do have to put out content. But what I've been loving this year is that I've kind of been shaping the content around what I want to read rather than prioritizing the content first. So if I want to do a week reading highly anticipated releases, I'll do it and I have done it, which is something I never would have allowed myself to do last year. So already 2024 is shaping up to be a great reading year. Let's start with January where I think the majority of these books come from because I read the most in January. In fact, I've read nearly half of what I've read so far this year in that one month. So I did read 56 books in January, 43 of those were manga and then 13 of those were novels. So the reason why I read so much in January is because I read the entirety of Berserk. There are 42 volumes in Berserk, however I do have these deluxe editions where there are three volumes in one. And I did count each volume on their own. Look, if there's gonna be three volumes in one, why would I just count it as one? <laughs> so you might be thinking, oh well Gavin's cheating. Cheating for what? Like this isn't a test, this isn't a race. This is just my personal reading journey. So if I want to count these three in one editions as three volumes, then you know I will. But I love Berserk so much. It is currently my second favorite manga series of all time. It is very, very dark. It is about a swordsman in this very medieval fantasy setting. And he has a brand on him that brings demons to him. R.I.P. Kentaro Miura, his illustration style was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I thought getting through 42 volumes of this in January would have been an absolute nightmare, but it was easier than I thought. And I had the best time reading it all and reading it for a vlog. It was just amazing. And then the only other manga I read in January was Mimi's Tales of Terror by Junji Ito. I love this as well. I mean, it wasn't like spectacularly amazing. There were some stories in this that really do stand out. It is like an anthology and it's based off someone else's work, but Junji Ito was just like illustrated it. And there were so many creepy moments that have stuck with me even to this day. There was one where, you know, someone was hanging from the trees, dead, and wherever they went, this body would like turn and look at them. Oh my God, it was intense. And that is just a little taste of what you can expect from this. It was so good. In terms of novels in January, I ended up borrowing from my library. I've been using my library a lot more this year. In one of them that I did borrow from the library, I borrowed at the end of December and just finished it in January. And that was The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. And I gave that book 3.5 stars. I did quite like the setting and the world of that one, but it didn't really blow me away. In fact, there was quite a long period in that book that felt like I was a little bit bored. It essentially follows two different characters, a boy who always lived in the library and a girl who lived in a settlement way outside, I think it was called The Dust. And there is this mechanism in the library that allows people to be transported into whichever book they have. And I do love the idea of that library setting and I did enjoy the library very, very much. And I will check out the sequel. It's probably not high priority, but I do really wanna read that one at some point. And I also borrowed from the library, The Women Could Fly by Megan Giddings. I give that book four stars. I read that for Winterween and I read it alongside Leech by Hiran Ennis. And I also gave this one four stars. So I gave both of those books in that video 
four stars. The Women Can Fly is a dystopian that is set in a world that's pretty much like our own, except the fact that witches are real. And women have to be married by the time they're like 30, otherwise they'll be suspected of being witches. The themes and the commentaries on social things, such as like women and their autonomy, and how much control they have in the world was so beautifully explored and it really does make you think damn it's not really that much different from our own world is it so i really love the questions it asked and the writing style so so much i would definitely check out more from that author but leech on the other hand is a totally different but it was still so very good which is why i gave this one four stars as well it was a little bit weird and there was some like body horror there was some like gross visuals this is a world where there are like parasites and they're controlled by the institute and a lot of the doctors of this world world are fed this parasite in order to control and we also have like the main character who is replacing a previous doctor who died mysteriously at this chateau this gothic like chateau and yeah it was a little bit hard to follow at times but I kind of liked it I kind of liked the weirdness of it and again the kind of themes of autonomy and our own selves and control is so well explored in this I was actually surprised that both the women could fly and this one had similar themes like that so Winterween was a success with two four star books I did read Crooked House back at the Christy, I lost the footage. I accidentally lost the footage that I started filming for this video. I read this just before I went to the Shire house and I wiped my memory card before I went there so I had all of the footage for that vlog and yeah, erased uh, me as Sagatha Christie solving this one. Except, uh, spoiler alert, since you'll never see the footage because it's deleted and I can't even recover it. I did not solve this one. I failed. But I did actually enjoy this one a lot. I gave this one 4.5 stars. It's one of my favourite Agatha Christie novels, I think. It had such a good story. One that was like a little bit different. It doesn't have any of the main detectives like Poro or Miss Marple, which I think was really good. I was not expecting the ending of this. Like it took such a turn and a twist. And I read this alongside with my patrons and we watched the movie of it as well. And that was a pretty good movie too. And this one is, I guess, also a little bit Knives Out-esque. It is following this family that live in this amazing house, but it's like a little bit crooked and the head of the family dies. Agatha Christie's books are hit or miss for me and this one was a hit. I'm just so sad that I lost all that footage. I still have my whiteboard for it as well with like my suspects on the other side. I'm not gonna show you too much of that because of spoilers in case you wanna read it. But yeah, it's gone. Never to see the light of day again. And as I just mentioned, I did read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien when I went to the Shire House, which is my favorite video ever. In my opinion, the best video I've ever made. <laughs> and I probably will never ever top that in my lifetime. And these were a reread. These all got like four stars years ago when I first read them. But upon a reread, I gave them all five stars. Well, actually, apart from The Hobbit, I think I gave a four star. I just absolutely freaking love the series, The Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers, Return of the King, all of them, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I had the best time reading them. I just love the setting so much. The characters are fantastic. I love the writing. I love old school kind of fantasy writing kind of books. <laughs> so it really was a lot of fun going through them. Katie by Elle McNichol was the only middle grade, uh, well, I guess apart from The Hobbit, because The Hobbit is technically counted as middle grade. But the only middle grade I read in January, this one is coming out now, actually. I, I think it's due out now. And this one is a prequel to a kind of spark that follows Addie's older sister, Katie and her struggles at school, the way that people perceive her because she's autistic, but also how Katie manages to protect the people around her who are being bullied, and it's just a fantastic story. I love it so much. I love anything Elle McNichol writes. So yep, gave this one four stars. I did also read The Silmarillion. I did not read this when I was in the Shire House, but I was still in the Tolkien mood when I came back. And this one was just like a fully audio book experience for me. And it really is just like a history of Middle Earth before and even during the events of The Lord of the Rings. And it was just so intriguing to find out about. There were some stories that really appealed to me. It read like a history book, but kind of a really interesting and intriguing history book. Gave it a three but only because it's just not really usually my thing and I think you do have to be a big Tolkien fan in order to appreciate and love this book but it was still a, an interesting read. Bookshops and Borders I was worried about by Travis Baldry because I didn't fully love Legends and Lattes. I was a little bit bored by it but this one I love way more. I gave this one a four star and I love the bookshop so it made me remember when I was a bookseller and the things that we used to do in the bookstore to try and get customers in, trying to make things seem a little bit more intriguing to customers to buy such as like making mystery books and wrapping them up so that they don't know what it is and all of these other things was just represented in here and I was like oh my god 
This has taken me back to my bookseller days, for better or worse, and I liked it a lot more than Legends and Art is. And then the last two books of January, I'm just gonna quickly hold them up so you know that I actually read them in January. These are silly books, and if I say the names out loud, the video will get limited ads. And I did read these in a silent library video that I will link down below, but yeah, these two. I, I read these two in January also. Moving on to February. Now, February was an interesting month indeed. I ended up doing two complete series read vlogs in February, one of them being the entire Princess Diary series by Meg Cabot. I respect and I acknowledge the fact that this series is very influential and there are a lot of you know, iconic things about it. And the movies, of course, are amazing. I love the movies, they're so much better than the books. But there were a lot of problems in these, which I do have a full-on vlog for. But this does follow Mia and she finds out she's a princess. And we get through her journal entries, her diary entries, all the things that goes through her head. And believe me, I know, I'm not in the target demographic. So I do appreciate the things that it does well. I do. But there are so many other problematic things about this, namely the fact that the main relationship, the love relationship in this, is between a minor and somebody who is four years older than her. And I'm not going to argue about it now. <laughs> I go into detail about it in that video. I've had many an argument in the comments section about this series. But I did read the 10 books. There are two additional books that I just could not could not do. So I just read the original 10 and there's a mix of ratings here. Some of these books got 3.5 or a 3 star and then some of them also got 1 star. So it is a, an eclectic mix of ratings for the series. And then I also read the Crescent City series by Sarah J Maas. I reread House of Earth and Blood. I read it for the first time in 2020 and I loved it when I first read it. Didn't love it as much when I reread it but it was still pretty good. Then I read House of Sky and Breath for the first time didn't really like it to be honest. It was extremely boring. And then I finally did get around to House of Fame and Shadow, which is the brand new book, and it's just not really good. It is a terribly written series. Like the first book I thought was written really well, but then after that, it just completely falls off. It does follow Bryce, and she lives in Crescent City where there are different kinds of beings like werewolves and fae and shit like that. But Bryce, I can't stand her by the end of the series. Hunt, her love interest, so boring, so bland, don't like him either. The end of this series was so ridiculous. I genuinely think it might have been written by AI. The last book was more entertaining than the second book, so I'll give it that, but it still, it, it wasn't a good series. And speaking of bad books, I did read Boys of the Dead. This is a manga, a boys love manga, and it is set in a zombie apocalypse. However, there are some really sketchy, weird things to do with age, so I ended up really despising this book and I have unhauled it. I still have my unhauled pile from the start of February. It isn't good. I would totally recommend not reading this. I love the idea of like gay romance in a zombie setting and there are, I think there's like a YA book or something like All We Left Behind or Leave Behind the World, something like that, I don't know. But there are some gay zombie stories. This one, please don't pick it up. But a great gay manga is Cherry Magic, 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard. And yeah, the title of this is absolutely ridiculous. The main character does get telepathy when he turns 30 because he's still a virgin. And through that telepathy, he ends up hearing the thoughts of one of his hot co-workers, how much he has a crush on him. And it just starts this really sweet and wholesome story that is just, oh, so beautiful. It is up there with Heartstopper for me with just how much I love it. And I was obsessed. So I read the first five volumes in February. I read volume six in March. And I do want to continue reading because I believe there are 10 volumes out physically right now. And I think there are more after that, potentially. It's just fantastic. I love it so much. I did get The Kind with Saving by Peter Swanson out from the library in January, but I read it in February because I'm a little bit behind on my one year long library challenge video that should be coming in December. And I check out a book from the library each month and read it based on a prompt that I've given myself. And The Kind with Saving was my January prompt that I read in February and I really liked it. I won't tell you my rating for it or go in depth with my thoughts because I do want to save it for my library challenge video and I do have my February prompt March read that I also will include in this wrap up but again I won't go too much in depth with it because I want everything to be saved for that library video and then after that I don't think I will reveal what I've gotten from the library for that challenge so really I'm just going to give you a sneak peek to the first two books and then after that nothing. So yeah The Kind Worth Saving is the sequel to The Kind Worth Killing which was a surprise to me because I did not like Nine Lives by Peter Swanson, read The Kind Worth Killing, really enjoyed it 
and I thought the Kenwood Saving was actually pretty good. Another book that I got out of the library was The Pale House Devil by Richard Cadry. And I did that one for a horror novella vlog, which I do on the other three that I read for that video. So we have The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval, Crossroads by Laurel Hightower, and Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Cole. The Pale House Devil was one of my least favourites of that vlog. I gave it a two star and it was just a little bit boring to me. It's really about a couple of guys who go to this house to sort of exercise a demon from it. And I just didn't like it. I just didn't find it scary whatsoever. I also really did not like Nothing But Black and Teeth. I gave this one one star. This one had some of the worst writing I've seen. I hated the dialogue between the characters. This one is about a wedding group going to this house in order to see it as a wedding venue and it's just really bad. It's just really, really bad. I did like The Ballad of Black Tom more than the other two that I've just mentioned. This one is loosely inspired by an HP Lovecraft story and I just don't think H.P. Lovecraft or any kind of cosmic horror books are really for me. So I do struggle with them a lot. So I probably won't pick up more cosmic horror unless it's for a, a sort of reading challenge. But yeah, I did like this one, but some of it did go over my head and I didn't find it as, again, like scary as I wanted to. But I did really enjoy Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. I gave this one 4.5 stars. I thought it was grim. I thought it was written pretty well. I liked the story of this mother who has lost her child and she accidentally bleeds on his memorial and he sort of comes back. And I just found that premise so interesting. And for a novella, it really does pack a punch. So really enjoyed it. Definitely the only success from that vlog. And then finally in February, I did read 13 volumes of Spy Family. I read volumes 12 and 13 on the Shonen Jump app, which is why I don't have them physically because it's not out in English yet. But I love the series so much. I love the characters. I love the family that we've made. I love the fact that it follows Lloyd, who is a spy with a mission where he has to find a wife who turns out to be an assassin who he doesn't know about. And he has to adopt a girl called Anya, who is a telepath. And none of them know about each other except the child. The child can hear their thoughts and it's just so good, so much action, adventure, so much wholesome content. Oh my god, one of my favourites. I think my third favourite manga series of all time right now. <laughs> okay, March. March was actually a great month. I felt like I really felt the balance between what I was reading in terms of like novels and manga. And I also found my first five star read of the year that wasn't a reread. Because even though I gave the Lord of the Rings trilogy five stars, that was a reread. But in terms of like reading books for the first time, Kindred by Octavia A. Butler. Oh my god, like this is definitely my favourite book so far this year and it beats every single book that I read last year which just tells you the power, the power of Octavia A. Butler. So this follows Dana who in 1976 keeps getting pulled back in time to a plantation in 1815 and for some reason she seems to be connected to this white guy called Rufus and his family and you do find out why. This is like really harrowing. This is Dana's perspective as a black woman who keeps getting taken back to a plantation where the people around her are trying to enslave her. I found the writing so incredible. I need to read more by Octavia Butler because this just changed my life. Unfortunately the same can't be said with the next book which was A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I gave this one two stars and to be honest I did fall asleep. Like this bored me so much I fell asleep during it and I <laughs> I still haven't read the last few chapters. Jan literally just read this one in terms of like the worst books that I've read and she just went off and read them. I've read her worst books and we both have vlogs for it. I'll link both down below and Jan read it for that vlog and yeah this is like the most recent book that I just really don't like. I don't like the main character. I despise the romance. I found the main character judgmental. I hated how she treated her love interest to begin with. I just didn't like it. I found the story so dull and boring. She is an architecture student and she goes to this late author's house in order to help there in what have you. I genuinely don't care about this book anymore. It was a highly anticipated book as well because I read it for a slice of life vlog but I also read Everyone on This Train is a Suspect by Benjamin Stevenson for that vlog too. This was definitely highly anticipated because Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone which is the first book was my favourite book of 2023. That one got a 4.5 and this one also gets a 4.5. Not quite five star even though I love the narration style of a narrator who pretty much talks directly to the audience, me. He talks to me. And this one is set on the train. It does follow the same main character from the first book. And he has now written a book based off of the first book, Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. So I loved all the meta references. I just really liked it a whole lot. It was really fun to follow along with. I don't think I can ever solve a story like this 
but it was like fun to even just try and attempt that. It's definitely not as formulaic as something like Agatha Christie, for instance. Definitely one of my favorites of this year so far. And then I also read Feybound by Sarah L. Ariffy in the same blog. And I read The Final Strife by Sarah last year and I liked it. This one I think I like slightly more than The Final Strife, but I, I give this one 3.5, I think. This one is in a world where elves and fae don't really say eye to eye. We follow Yiran, who is part of the elven army, but she gets discharged pretty much straight away and she ends up running into the Fae. I did love the writing so much, it's why I really enjoyed The Final Strife and I will definitely pick up more from this author. Absolutely lush. One of the silliest vlogs I've ever done, like literally to the point where I've got comments of people saying, I've specifically clicked dislike on this video because it's a stupid idea, is the Wheel of Time first and last video I did. So I did get the Eye of the World and I also did get a Memory of Light from my library, it is now returned, and I still liked both of them. Even though I jumped 13 books or something like that, I still quite liked the final book. I thought it was pretty good. It was just all to do with like a war, a battle, and there was like so much death and a lot of like really interesting and exciting things happening in that world. But the first book I ended up giving a four star and I would probably continue, honestly, even after reading the final book. There's so much in the middle there that I feel like I could still discover for the first time that I don't think it's ruined the enjoyment for it whatsoever. But yeah, this is a fantasy, like very highly regarded fantasy by Robert Jordan. And I liked the main character, Rand. There were some really interesting characters, but Rand, his village just got attacked and he and his friends, as well as some strangers who come, they go off on this adventure. And it does sound very Lord of the Rings-esque. This was inspired by the Lord of the Rings, I believe. And I could really feel those inspirations. And that's probably why I really ended up enjoying this. It didn't feel like a ripoff. It felt like it was doing its own thing. So hey, keep an eye out. I might try book two. I borrowed What You're Looking For is in the library for my one year library challenge. And I, again, won't really say what I thought of that book. I did like it. There were a couple of issues I had with it, which I'm very excited to talk about in my library vlog, but it was like really good. It took ages to get. I went through hell to get that book, so I'm kind of disappointed it wasn't a five star, but I did give it a 3.5, which is still a pretty decent rating. And it is about five different people who come to this library and they sometimes aren't even on their way to this library. They don't really mean to be in this library, but they do find themselves in this library and there is a librarian there who gives them a recommendation. And it can be a really strange recommendation that does make a whole lot of sense in the moment. But once they've like read that book, it kind of changes their lives or it changes their perspectives. And I just loved that about that book. So yeah, keep an eye out for that library vlog. I'll talk about it more in there. I did read the second volume of Oshinoko just randomly. Like I didn't read this for any blog. I just loved the first volume when I read it last year. And I want to continue the series. I want to read manga every now and then without having to do a big ass vlog around it. And Oshinoko, oh my God. If you haven't read the first volume, please do. It is so strange. It is about a pop idol who is secretly pregnant and she goes to this hospital where this doctor works and this doctor is a fan but the doctor gets murdered and then reincarnated as this pop idol's baby and he still has all of his memories and we don't know like who murdered him and honestly something happens at the end of the first volume that is oh my god like it changed the course of the series. I was like, oh my god, like, what is even this series? I don't even know how to explain it. But I did like volume two. It wasn't as good as volume one, but there are some interesting elements, some, like, mystery elements as well that I'm excited about. So, yeah, it was good. I gave it four stars, I think. Speaking of doing vlogs on manga when I don't really have to, I did do a vlog for the first 16 volumes of Dragon Ball. This is all of the original series by Akira Toriyama, who passed away last month. He passed away on March 1st. So I want to do a vlog on Dragon Ball, and this is the original series. There is Dragon Ball Z and Super and all of that, but I just wanted to focus on the original because it's also the 40th anniversary of the series this year. So I was already going to read it this year, but because of the death of the manga care, I pushed my vlog up. And I did finish all 16 volumes. My vlog will be coming on Sunday, April 7th. It's already all done. I've got everything like ready for a little journey, a little adventure I'm going to be going on tomorrow. And I just need to get ahead of the curve. And I really enjoyed Dragon Ball by the end of it. I will say there are some really sketchy pervy things that happens in the first bit of this series so I don't know if I would fully recommend it to everyone. I will say the story is fantastic like you can really see how much of a masterpiece this is and how influential this series is so I do focus a lot on like the great aspects of the story in my blog but I do also mention some of the things that haven't dated well you know you do get the stock character pervy old man kind of character who uh, sexualizes women and 
there's just like some really questionable stuff with women. Still really enjoyed the fact that these characters have to collect seven Dragon Balls in order to summon a dragon and they can have any single wish in the world. So I really like that kind of aspect of it. Some really good fights, some good tournaments and stuff that I enjoy. But yeah, I have a vlog coming. Keep an eye out for it if you enjoy Dragon Ball. And I can't stop singing, I came in like a Dragon Ball. And then finally I do have six books that I have just read for a vlog where I read Jan's worst books. So firstly, I do have Book Lovers by Emily Henry, which I did DNF at page 236. This is my first DNF of the year. I'm gutted, absolutely gutted. But I really didn't like it. I don't think I'm a big Emily Henry fan, unfortunately. I thought the romance was going way too quickly. We were oversharing way too quickly. And I do find, you know, sharing stuff about yourself to be more intimate than intimacy, like physical intimacy and there was just too much of that happening way too quickly. The romance just wasn't really that believable because the two main characters are dull as fuck. Then I read Tender is a Flesh by Agostina Basterica. This one made me feel physically sick, gave it four stars. It was really good, but I wish we had have delved into the premise a little bit more of like this world where we can't eat animal meat anymore. So we've kind of resorted to eating human meat or referred to as special meat. And I just wish we had just like expanded on that. Maybe had like other stories set in this world rather than following this main character who is someone who does all of like, the supply stuff and you see what happens to humans during that. You see what happens to parts of their body, like what happens to their skin and stuff. So I did find it so intriguing a lot of this stuff, but I also kind of wish that we had a little bit of a different story in this world, but never mind, still good. Coming to the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, I gave a 3.5, very weird. Again, another one where I think I wish we had just got a little bit more of that premise because a lot of it did end up getting a little bit repetitive. We follow a gay couple who have a child and they are in this cabin and these strangers, these four strangers come and they tell them that they have to sacrifice one of them themselves or it's the end of the world. And yeah, it's it's very intense. I got maybe slightly a little bit bored with the repetition by the midpoint and then something happens by like three quarters of the way through and it was pretty exciting from then on out. Good story, good, good story. I checked out Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewel from my library, which I do need to return. I need to try and return by tomorrow, otherwise I'll be late because I'm going away and it's due back on the 5th of April. <laughs> But Invisible Girl is my first Lisa Jewel book. I gave it a 2.5. I did want some spoilers in my Reading Jan's First Books vlog. But while I did like the majority of this book, I was so underwhelmed by the reveal. I was underwhelmed by the ending. I mean, there were some parts of the ending that I enjoyed. I felt like a whole lot of nothing pretty much happened in this. And it did start off really well. It felt like I was hearing gossip. And then it just kind of devolved and it, it just became a story that I, I didn't fully enjoy. But I would check out more from Lisa Jewel. I didn't think it was terrible. I thought it was still nicely written. Uh, so we'll we'll see. We'll see if I check out more by her. Then I read Magnolia Parks. I DNF'd it at page 240. Again, the repetition was getting way too much. It is very toxic and I don't even care about the toxicity of the characters. You know, we have a guy called BJ who cheated on Magnolia and he just keeps hurting her and breaking her heart. Magnolia still loves BJ, but she does things in front of him that breaks his heart. You know, there's just like a lot of doing that, like a lot of back and forth. And again, I don't mind that, but it was just like, the same things were happening over and over again. I was like, okay, we can't be creative with this. So unfortunately I didn't like it. And while there were some good lines in this and it was pretty well written to begin with, with this starting to get the repetition, I was really dreading reading it. And the writing was just getting a little bit too dull and repetitive for me. So Jessa Hastings, I'm so sorry. I have DNF the series. I'm not gonna continue. And then so for the children by Craig DeLui, I gave this one four stars. This one had another fantastic premise that I do wish we had a focus like some other things on because I do think we kind of focus on some of the wrong things sometimes. But we do have a world where every child in the world dies and then they get resurrected three days later and they come back a little bit different and they need blood. And it's kind of not exactly the kind of story you're expecting because I was expecting some kind of like vampiric story maybe, but it's really not. It is a little bit similar to Crossroads in some ways, but I did love how exciting and intense the author made this story until we got to a lot of the dull parts of it. You know, we do follow a lot with the parents and while it was believable and realistic in some of the responses, there were other responses that just like kind of contradicted character stuff and it just made me like believe less 
in this world. I suspend my disbelief with any kind of book, I do. Like it just got harder even within this world to suspend it sometimes. But no, I really like the premise of it. I thought it was well written and I will definitely remember this one for quite some time. So that should be 124 books according to my spreadsheet. I don't think I've missed any but it is hard when I like return some to the library and I don't have everything here with me. And I do apologize if a lot of that was like very brief and you do want more thoughts on them. I talked about pretty much every single thing I've mentioned in this video in vlogs and this is really just like a little check-in just so you know kind of what I've been reading, what I've been doing and hopefully you enjoyed it. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know what you read the past three months. Have you had a great 2024 reading experience so far this year? Let me know in the comments. And I give a huge thank you to my patrons and my One Piece channel members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to join my Patreon or my One Piece channel membership, then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.